live from Norfolk, Virginia, came what I think is my favorite episode of Dynamite in 2021. I would say this might be the best episode of Dynamite in 2021. I think last night's show might be one of the three or five best episodes of Dynamite that I've seen going back to October 2019. I don't think that's hyperbole. I don't think that's emotional overreaction because this show was banging and I'm absolutely going to give them credit where it was due. More like this, please. This wasn't like the Arthur Ashe Stadium show or some of the other shit you did where you do all these crazy match stipulations. You have to give away all this shit for free. You didn't do any of that. This was just a well put together, well laid out, well formatted, well written, well produced show. I thought it was fantastic. I mean, it kicked ass right from the very beginning. It's Hangman Page and his title celebration. He's back home in Virginia. Virginia's for lovers and all that. And Brian Danielson ain't got time for that shit. Like, let's take a moment to behold the magnificence and the splendor that has become Brian Danielson. Your underdog of the past. Your every guy of the past. Now has become America's greatest politician. This son of a bitch was able to politic and maneuver himself into the main event of main events of WrestleMania this year. He squeezed himself into a spot with Edge and fucking Roman Reigns. Like that is high level politics of the highest order. He used WWE to leverage against AEW so that way you know he got more money from AEW. He is Brian Danielson. Don't shit talk him like that's not a thing. He is a better businessman than you and you fucking know it. He, when he makes his debut, he takes the shine off of CM Punk and his first match at All Out in seven and a half years of wrestling. That gone seven and a half years, his first match in his hometown. And here comes Brian Danielson to take the shine away from him and take the shine away from Adam Cole. Not intentionally, but you know, like, Brian Danielson's going to do Brian Danielson business because, God damn it, he's got Breakfast Club business to do. And coming out here, yeah, like, Celebration, blah, blah, blah. This man is about business. Business. And I resent all of you that are sitting there talking about a heel turn. Where exactly did he turn heel here? Sure, he took a play out of the three books of God on the Hunter the Hearst and the Helmsley. Praise be him. Ugga. He took some petty shots in there, but that's okay. Used to be cool when Triple H did it, so it's cool when he did it too. He's learning, that's the key thing. But he has taken this opportunity after slaying the giant Nero. He says, now damn it, I want a shot at the title that I earned because I beat the giant because I positioned myself by saying, putting you over, that doesn't work for me, brother. This is fantastic. Daniel Bryan's not running and hiding. He's not taking any shortcuts. He was the one that was prepared to wrestle, not Hangman Page. What, because he maybe talked shit about Virginia, which some of it shit is true? What, because he said things about Hangman Page that are also true, like, oh, I don't want you to have any excuses? Like, it's funny how we hate truth. We hate reality. We hate facts. All you have to do is look at social media to see that. So now all of a sudden, magically, Brian Danielson is a fucking heel? No, if anything, he is a bigger babyface than he ever has been, and you shall hashtag behold him. Behold him and his majesty and his splendor. And he's going to squash the Dark Order one by one. He started off with a fat fuck evil Uno, and next week in Chicago, he's going to take off and take on Colt Cabana and put him out of his misery too. That's what I'm fucking talking about. Like, this first half hour of this show was fantastic. And then they followed us up. Now, you sprinkle in different interviews and backstage segments tonight, and those are even well paid, relatively well placed and well executed. But Tomohiro Ishii and Orange Cassidy versus The Blade and The Butcher. Like, who gives a shit about anything else? It's fucking Ishii! Ishii fucking rules! And the crowd loved this match. Why? Because everybody loves Ishii. Why? Because Ishii fucking rules. I've been waiting for him to appear. 
No offense to Suzuki and other guys, but God damn it, this is easy. This is for me. And if you don't like it, then fuck you. Shit, like Nyla Rose and Hikaru Shida even tore the house down in their TBS tournament match. Like, yeah, it probably went a couple of minutes too long. I'll give you that. Um, it was really good, though. And at least I could say, if nothing else, you didn't have Sheeta win, so you let Nyla Rose advance. I mean, this gives the Nyla Rose character something to latch onto a little bit. But the stuff between Sheeta and Serena Deeb has, for the first time in history, made me invested in something that is involving Hikaru Sheeta. That in and of itself is a massive freaking success. So the match was really good and you have things that matter coming out of it. It's amazing how beautiful and simple wrestling can be when you don't fucking overthink it. And then we got MJF, you know, where they showed the video at the beginning where he was doing his post-match promo um, after Full Gear talking about Darby. And now he comes out and he's ready to take on the world. And oh, fuck, we've been waiting for this. Finally, CM Punk going to do some big time business here. Fuck waiting, fuck anything else. Dive into it, dive into it now. CM Punk and goddamn MJF. And you could feel it. Like the crowd really wanted it. You could feel the moment. And it was beautiful. All CM Punk comes out, he looks at him, and he walks fucking away. Now you can tie into the past, like the history with those two in a picture together back when MJF was a kid. Like this is beautiful. Like this is what we wanted to see out of a CM Punk. This is what I've been waiting for is him and MJF because that's the obvious fucking feud to do. Ain't no reason to wait. Do it now. And obviously the crowd was absolutely loving it. If anything, I'm kind of pissed at myself that I didn't buy tickets and drive the hour and a half or so from Richmond down to Norfolk to go watch this fucking show. Because I wish I would have because this thing was fantastic. I was called out though. Maybe Darby Allen got hit in the head one too many times at full gear. Maybe he was thinking about how much he loves turtles. I don't know. But I can understand the confusion like Billy Gunn and his sons are there and, you know, Darby Allen's assuming, presuming that Billy Gunn is challenging him. And he wasn't. He was challenging Sting. You know, and I'll call out too, let's go back to see CM Punk and MJF. Like, I understand, like, that's a big deal. But they're both ducking the icon and they fucking know it. Like, the stakes of that match should be winner takes on Sting. Loser also takes on Sting. Because it's about giving Sting two marquee matches, damn it! Anyways. Dante Martin and Leo Rush versus the Acclaim. The only thing I'll shit on here with Caster's uh, pre-match rap, why would you sit there and refer to Leo Rush as a virgin when he has multiple kids? Doesn't he have, like, multiple kids? Like, three of them, something like that? Like, what's he done? Went to the fucking spank bank and made out a couple knuckle babies and captured them in a fucking vial and then got women impregnated with it? Like, come on. Like, at least make the insult relevant and believable. I don't think that's too much to ask. But this match was pretty good. You know, good showcase for Dante Martin and Leo Rush. Good showcase for the acclaimed afterwards, the Teen Taz angle with Dante Martin. Sure, like, hey, you giving me some camera time with Ricky Starks? Powerhouse Hobbs, I am good with that. I do want to say this, though. I don't know if I'm going to make it to Friday. Because first, Jade Cargill is talking about on Twitter how she wants to eat them cakes in reference to Red Velvet. And, and I'm already like, and I'm spent. And now, apparently, Red Velvet wants a piece of Jade's ass, and it's just like, who doesn't, sister? But more so like, it's going to be a rampage on Friday, that's for sure. I don't know, we're going to be talking about the wrestling show. I give her a spanking. Titty twisters. And then rub each other's booties and kiss and like, do girly things. Yeah! That's what I'm fucking talking about. Uh, but the main event for the TNT Championship. Jay Lethal's official AEW match debut taking on the champ Sammy Guevara. This match got plenty of time. It was solid. And, you know, you can sit there and kind of question, like, why do you debut Jay Lethal in this spot and have him lose his first match? I'll say this. Like, it's one of those, you know, play ball with us type of things. But it's also, like, 
You don't want to bring him in and have him immediately beat somebody. I'm glad there wasn't a bunch of shenanigans, a bunch of bullshit or anything like that. Like, sometimes it takes more than one opportunity, one chance to beat somebody. Like, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. That's just the way it goes. It's actually a little refreshing to bring somebody in like a Jay Lethal. Even though I'd still question, like, why would a Jay Lethal want to go after the TNT championship? But I digress. Um, but it's kind of refreshing that he came out, fought clean, lost. Shit happens sometimes. Not everybody that debuts needs to win their first match. If you do it right, it can work just fine and sometimes work even better because it's different, less predictable. So it was even a good main event to kind of cap off the night. Yeah, like I said, like pretty much from top to bottom, there was nothing for me to really shit on or hate on here. I thought it was fantastic. I don't say fantastic a lot about an AEW show, but this was one of them. Matches were very good to great. Angles begun, angles teased, stories advanced. Like, this show had pretty much everything this week. This was an outstanding show, and I hope we get more of this, more of this, in future weeks. Or just give us two hours of Jade eating Velvet's cakes and uh, Velvet getting a piece of Jade's ass. That would also work just fine. <laughs>